Good morning. Let's see here. Let me hit all the right buttons and make sure that we are now connecting to Facebook. And we're now connected to YouTube. Awesome. Good morning. How are you? Hope you're doing well. My name is Bill DeWeese. If you're brand new to this channel, I'm a voiceover talent, have been for the past 16 years. Um, I'm also a voiceover coach, which I've been doing for about the past decade or maybe a little longer now. And every weekday morning, uh, pretty much every weekday morning, right around 8 a.m., in this case, 8.04 a.m. Eastern Time, we get together and we talk a little bit of voiceover. I like to share a thought just to get you started off this morning. And uh, I always appreciate it if you take a moment just to check in in the live stream, let me know who you are, where you're at. Good morning, Bruce and uh, Edward, Danny. What's up? Uh, in San Diego. You are up early this morning, my friend. 5.05 a.m. Good for you. I haven't been up that early. I can't remember. I, I spent most of my career as a um, in radio, and most of that as a morning guy, in addition to my programming and, and actually in general manager duties as well. I always loved working on air as well as uh, you know, management and coaching and coaching talent. But the funny thing is, and I love the job. I love the job, but I hated, I'm not a morning person by nature. It's just not left to my own devices. You know, I'll, I'll mosey out of bed around eight or eight 30. Um, but let's see here, Dory, Benton, Lawrence, Lemuel, David, all right, Sean, Doug, and you keep on filing. Wonderful. Thank you for coming into the live stream this morning because I wanted to talk for a few moments about a question that popped up yesterday in the live stream and I didn't have a chance to uh, to answer it. It was a question regarding rates. How do you how do you get uh, how do you get the best rates for your voiceover work? This is a point of contention within the voiceover industry, which many of you may are already be aware of. Um, as time has uh, gone on and technology has evolved and impacted the voiceover industry, but you know, I, I think it's important to understand to have to really understand the context. It's affected all business and every aspect of life. I mean, we just don't do things the way we used to because technology's changed the way that we do that. There used to be uh, very strong gatekeepers within the voiceover industry, meaning primarily unions and agents and um, because of that, the voiceover industry, and because of there weren't as many talent, you know, it's, it becomes a supply demand kind of thing. Supply demand always drives prices. Uh, how you know how badly uh, does somebody want it based on what's what's available and what are they willing to pay? And um, it used to be talent going back 20, 30 years ago. You know, we get paid. A, generally speaking, not always, but generally speaking a pretty healthy amount of money for their work. But then you fast forward to today, just like, you know, you, you, you're not going to pay $10,000 uh, for uh, a notebook computer unless it's a brand new, you know, MacBook Pro with its, you know, the specs are off the charts. And even then it's still not going to cost you. I've never been able to price one up to, I've tried to see how expensive I can get one. And, you know, seven, maybe $8,000 if you get the eight gigabit or eight gigabyte hard drive and the whole thing. But Technologies, everything, everything's cheaper. Everything, uh, relatively speaking, for the most part, is is cheaper. And it's the same thing with voiceover. Again, it's a supply demand thing. And technology, it's not because some body like me came along and said, "Hey, let's charge lower prices." No, that's just the way the market pays what the market feels a voiceover is worth. And um, bear with me for just a moment because I'm I'm going to I'm trying to move from to, from context and kind of philosophical, uh, you know, approach to this, to the more specific, actionable, strategic stuff that you can do to get the best rates. So, but you have to understand that people just generally speaking, don't pay as much for a lot of things today because there's much more, <coughs> excuse me, much more competition. Uh, and, and it's, it's easy. It's so, I mean, if you don't do it, they'll find somebody else to do it. It's just easy to find, uh, we're, we're a commodity. We're easily replaceable you know, with, with somebody else. It's just, it's the way it is with a few exceptions, with a very few exceptions. Most of us are completely replaceable and, and interchangeable with there's so, always somebody else that's just as good or better at what we do. And, you know, when that happens, prices are going to drop. 
And then again, the other part of this is the market pays what the market feels it's worth. Market determines the price. We can set a price. We can ask for a price. We can demand certain things, including a certain price. But that doesn't mean the client has to pay it. Ultimately, that's their decision. It's not yours. You can certainly ask for what you want. You can hold out for what you want. That's your right. Uh, that's your responsibility as a business owner. But just because you want it doesn't mean you want to get it. Um, and conversely, you know, what you, th you, know you, you may find a client who feels you're more valuable than you are. That's happened to me. There have been times when, uh, when a client has paid me more than I expected to be paid for a job because they were, you know, they, they saw the value in, in what I did. And I'll, let me give you just a quick example. I was uh, hired the other day. Uh, somebody offered me 400 bucks to read like less than a page of on hold recordings. That's more than I typically get, but that's what they felt my value was and that's what they offered to pay me. So there are those, those times too. So how do, you, how do you ensure that you get the best possible rate? Well, again, I think it's important to understand the context, kind of where we come from, how technology has affected supply demand um, and that the market decides price. Strategically, you know, practically, how does that work? Well, what I like to do whenever possible is I like to ask the client what their budget for the project is. Now, understand that I do have a rate sheet. I've done this long enough that I have a pretty good idea of what, I'm, what I can get for a job. Sometimes, depending on the client, it's going to be more. Sometimes, you know, it's, it's going to be less. But there is no standard any longer. Now, if, you're, if you belong to SAG-AFTRA, you're a union member, there is a standard. And, and, you know, unless you can only work for people who are willing to hire you and who are willing to pay those rates. And, and um, it's very, very, very competitive. And it's going to, you know, demand a, a premium. And therefore, it's going to be very difficult, again, generally speaking, to get that kind of work. Not that you can, it's just not as plentiful and it's harder harder to make a living if, if you're limiting yourself only to sag after type of work. But I keep, I keep a rate sheet based on what I know I generally can get for something. And, and, and I also watch the marketplace. I see what other people are charging and to get a general idea. And also, if you're brand new at this, don't expect to make the same amount. Somebody's been doing it for a long time who has a more refined set of skills. You know, you're generally speaking not going to be worth as much, but that's fine, right? I mean, that's how careers start. Nobody pays you CEO level wages when you start a job, you know, and when our first, for most of us, not all of us, but for most of us, our first jobs were at a place like a McDonald's or fast food, maybe, you know, a grocery store. My trajectory, my career tra uh, trajectory was I worked at a Dairy Queen. Well, it wasn't actually Dairy Queen, but Dairy Queen type of place. I graduated to a grocery store after that. And then from there, when it went my first career job, you know, it was while I was still in school and it was part-time and it was related to my job and I didn't make very much money. And then it, you know, it took a while to build, you know, to build that income. But again, when you're looking, when somebody approaches you about a job, the best way to, uh, to respond is what's your, what's your, what budget have you set? for this project. Because once you know the budget, what they're working with or what they're thinking they want to pay, then you've got a good starting place. And perhaps what they're willing to pay is what you would like to be paid, what you're willing, you know, what you were going to charge. Or maybe it's even more than you would have asked. In which case you can simply say, that works for me. Thanks. Let's, let's do this thing. If it's not what you would typically charge or you don't think it's, it's worth your time and effort, again, because you have every right just because somebody's not willing to pay you doesn't mean you're obligated to do it. In a free enterprise system, it's, you know, everybody has a choice. And your choice may mean you don't get the job, but you still have, you still have that choice. So uh, let's say, let me give you a for instance. Let's say it's an explainer video and uh, it's a couple of minutes long. Uh, what you would like to get for it, let's say it's $300. And they come back to you and they say, well, my budget is, is like $200. Well, you can come back and say, I, you know, I certainly understand the typical rate, my standard rate for a explainer video of that length is $300. Uh, is it possible for us to meet in the middle, say 250? And that works a lot, but you just have to, you know, approach it professionally. Say, I understand uh, my standard rate is 300. Is there, are you flexible to meet in the middle? 
that's a very simple way, you know, to do that. And then uh, oftentimes they'll say, yeah, sure, we can do that. If they're, you know, steadfast and now I cannot budge on my rate, <clears throat> you have a decision to make. Either A, you don't do it because it's just not enough. And only you can decide whether it's enough or not. There's not a wrong answer. This is a decision for you and for nobody else to make because you are an independent business person in a free market system. And so this is your, this is your choice to make. And you may decide, you know, it's just not good enough. It's not enough based on, I mean, there could be a hundred reasons. You've got a full-time job. You don't need the money, you know, and, and so it's not worth it, you know, your time and effort. That's, a, you know, that's only you can make that, make that decision. Um, but let's say, uh, again, they, they come back and, and, and they're like, no, that's not, I can't, I can't, I'm sticking with 200 or 100 or $75 or whatever the case may be. So the first is, you know, I'm sorry, I can't do that, but thank you for reaching out. End of story. You move on. The other is, um, okay, I can, I can meet you at your price rate. However, and here's, here's, here's the, the, however, always ask for something in return. Otherwise it's a very one-sided relationship that you're building. And usually the thing that I ask for is time. Okay, I can do it for that rate, but uh, I need three to four days to turn this around. Most everybody wants stuff same day. And um, usually that, again, usually that works. Not always. And if it doesn't, that's fine. You know, next, you move on. Um, but if they, it, it, it becomes a more equitable relationship if you get something in return for what you're giving up. Now, that doesn't mean I'll take three to four days. I may deliver it, you know, in a day. But at least the agreement was made that way to, to make it more equitable. And it helps to establish the relationship going forward. And they know what the expectations are uh, that, you know, if they're going to pay less than my standard rate, they need to expect to give up something for that. So those are the practical things that I use on a daily basis to negotiate and to get the best rates. And I hope you find that helpful, you know, take from it what you, what you want. If that doesn't work for you, then, you know, don't use it. But I think it is important to understand the economics of business, not just voiceover, but any business and how that works. And if you know that, you're better equipped to succeed. Uh, let's see here. Let's continue our good mornings this morning. Rick out in Wichita. What's up? Matt Orlando. Sean from the Grass State. What, what state is this, the, the Grass State? Uh, Sean, I'm the state up north. Is that Michigan? Oh, it must be Michigan because that would be the only state that we would refer to as the state up north. Uh, I think Woody Hayes. Woody Hayes, who who is our beloved, you know, uh, God rest his soul, the beloved by everybody in Ohio, um, football coach, OSU football coach, who renamed Michigan the state up north. Hey, David in Louisville. Uh, let's see, Lawrence. It's hot, humid in Raleigh. So I hear. So I hear. Hey, Dory, what's up? Benton, hey, in Southern California. Doug in Indy. Uh, Nebraska, good morning. Hey, Grant, how's it going? Sean, how are you? Danny says, typically my day starts at 4 a.m. Oh, Danny. Okay. Well, you are, you know, you're a special breed of individual and much respect goes out to you this morning. Um, my daughter, Mallory, uh, and her husband, Will, they start their day at about 4.30. I think he may even get up earlier than that. But they, um, you know, they have a weight room and they lift weights and work out in the morning. And, and uh, I have a lot of respect for that. I did a thing for a while with some friends who did that, who wanted me to join at 4.30. We, we would lift and then we would go out for coffee. And um, I enjoyed the fellowship, uh, but that 4.30 thing, man, it just does not work for me anymore. Matt says, can't wait till Friday. <laughs> if a few more days to go, hang in there. If an audition is for a 30 or 60 second spot, how important is it to deliver the audition right on time? And by right on time, I think Matt's referring to 30 or 60 seconds in length. Well, here's the thing, Matt. Oftentimes, it's been my experience that clients sometimes will write a script and not even pay attention to the time. So it's not unusual for me to receive a 30 second script that's really like 45 seconds worth of copy. And so, 
you know, sometimes, you know, they don't, it's it, number one, it may be not humanly possible to read it that fast. Secondly, if you do, they, there's no way it'd be usable. So if it, if it seems obviously too long, what I like to do, and by the way, give it a few reads before you make that determination. It's, it's interesting how after you've gone through it two, three, four times, all of a sudden it becomes easier to read faster and it doesn't sound as crazy as you thought it would. But what I like to do is I will give a read that is at the uh, at a time that feels appropriate to me. And if it's 40 seconds long, it's 40 seconds long. And they'll do a second take where I will record fast and edit to try to get it as close to this 30 or 60 or 15 or whatever it is that they want it. That's how I handle that. So they, they can hear it, hear the, the difference between the two. Hey, guy in St. Louis, Brian, Colorado. Good morning from sunny Florida. All right. Hey, Riley in Philly. Ken in... Uh, Magnetowin? You know, I'm embarrassed to say I, I do not know where that is. That is that a a smaller country? Magnetowin. Ken, if you want to give me a geography lesson, I would appreciate it because I'd love to know more about where that is located. And I and I apologize if I if I butchered the name. Hey, Tony in Ireland, Will in Arkansas, Brian. I'm getting addicting. <laughs> I grow in you kind of like a fungus, right? Jennifer, good morning from Marion, Illinois. All right, Dan, East Texas, Mark, Wilmington, North Carolina. Hey, Shalanda in Arizona. All right. Hey, it's not humid there, right? It's hot, but not humid. Michael in Connecticut, Steve Oshkosh, Rob, what's up? And uh, <laughs> Sazi says, I finally made it to your live uh, stream. He's in, or rather, I'm sorry, it's Jason in Evansville. Hey, Jason, Evansville, Indiana. All right. Yeah. Good morning. All right. Hey, let's see. What do we have here? Blue Ridge, Georgia. Riley in Texas. Herb in Miami. Mauricio sends hugs from Puerto Rico. Been watching for over four years with zero experience on the craft. Now I live as a full-time voiceover artist. Thank you for being a small part of that journey. Oh, Mauricio, thank you. And, and congrats. That's awesome. I love to hear that. Oh, let's see. Oops. I accidentally. Okay, here we go. Any idea, Christopher asks, how many dozens of short lists become hires over time at VDC, Voices.com? At least I see I'm close, but this field we are in is so competitive. Yeah, you know, I'll be honest with you. I just don't pay a lot of attention to likes and, and uh, you know, that kind of thing because it, it'll, it'll get into your head. And um, there's not an exam. I mean, it's going to differ for, for various people. But I would say, and by the way, a lot of people who hire me never give me a thumbs up. So that, that can be very misleading. So, you know, as a matter of fact, I would venture to say at least half the people have hired me on on pay to play platforms have never even, you know, have not given me a thumbs up or shortlisted me. They just hired me and they don't take the time to go through all that stuff. Um, so it's my advice is I just I wouldn't look at it. I would I would steer clear. The fact that you're getting them, that that's a good thing. Beyond that, it's hard to say. Uh, I'm sorry. I wish I had a better answer, but it's just it'll start to play with your head if you start looking too closely at it. I'm, I'm a set it and forget it guy when it comes to auditions. Hey, Annie, in New Zealand. All right. It's just after midnight. Oh, okay. Well, Annie, thanks for staying up for the live stream. I appreciate it. Good morning, John, in the far west suburbs of Chicago. Yeah, well, my old stomping grounds. Not the far west suburbs, but, you know, the Chicagoland area. Um. Jacqueline in Thailand. Oh, thank you for your kind comment. You're very welcome. Cindy in New Hampshire. Boy, a lot of folks on the live stream today. Ron, South Carolina, where the humidity is 86%, 82 degrees. All right. That's, yeah, that's starting to get a bit muggy. That getting to the place where you feel like you're wrapped in a nice, wet, warm blanket. Ah. Hey, Matt, what's up, Jim in Southwest Florida? Ken in Canada, uh, Northern Ontario to be specific. Dorita in Illinois. Hey, Dorita. Hey, Betts in Madison, Wisconsin. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Christopher in uh, Quebec. Awesome. Ballman, Connecticut. Ha, <laughs> ha. 
<laughs> okay, Riley asks a good question. If people on Upwork are asking to pay 10 bucks for an 1800 word voiceover, is there any point in trying to negotiate higher? Probably not. I mean, you, maybe you'll get a little bit more, but then you have to ask yourself, okay, what if they gave me 20 bucks for an 1800 word? Is that something I want to do? Um, it's the lower the relative rate that somebody's willing to offer, the more, the less flexible they're likely to be. And the more difficult, and th actually, this is a topic I need to talk about tomorrow. How, am, as a matter of fact, I'll make a mental note, note of it. Um, I'll talk about it tomorrow. The lower the pay, there's, there's a corresponding level of difficulty with the lower the pay, whereas there's a corresponding level of ease when you're working with somebody who pays more, right? I mean, the, and those of you who've done this long enough know what I'm talking about. <clears throat> and I'll just say this that the easiest job ever recorded paid $30,000 and took me, it was like one sentence, you know, took a, a few minutes. Uh, the most difficult have been, you know, not much at all. And they come back again and again and again and again, change this, change that. It's, it's crazy how that works. Uh, Grant tested his noise floor the other day and it was just a little too high because of a computer. Picked up a fanless computer yesterday during Prime Day. All right, Grant, way to go. Good problem solving there. Love it. Uh, Annie says, lots of us here because you are terrific and so lovable. <laughs> well, Annie, thank you. Uh, let's see, Rose. Oh, Philly girl in, Os uh, in Osaka. All right, awesome. Another uh, person in Texas. And hello from India, Shushil. Your daily videos are a constant reminder that I have something more to do with my voiceover business. All right. And Matt, 30 grand for one sentence. I know. You want to hear it? Are you ready for it? Wait for it. Here it comes. 30 grand. Chevrolet. Find new roads. That was it. And they took the audition. They didn't, I didn't even have to do a session for it. Nuts, right? And I mean, there's certainly jobs that pay more than that. Uh, but I'm, that was, yeah, that was, it, <laughs> that's crazy. If you, if you think of it in terms of, what I got paid on an hourly rate based on that or per word rate that was yeah, off the charts. It was one of those, um, you know, moments that uh, I'm very grateful for that, that I hope happens again someday. You know, we'll see. All right, guys. Hey, thanks so much for being here. I appreciate it. You guys have a great day.